Mr. Heber's uh, leadership, net takings was £643.88, returning a tasty profit of £143.88. Karen, let's know what Instinct got up to. The boys' team, the net takings after deduction of your accompaniments was £289.99, unfortunately making a net loss of £210.01. Not a good start. A loss. Very well done, young ladies. Very well done. Excellent. I've got a treat lined up for you. You're going off to Tom Aiken's restaurant. Now, Tom, who started his business at 16, about your age, and became the youngest chef to receive two Michelin stars. Yeah? Thank you very much. So, off you go and have a nice time. Gentlemen, not a great start to this process. You should have done much better than this. You come back in this boardroom and we'll go into this in a lot more detail. Off you go. I'm Tom. Hey, How you doing? Hi, Kirsty. Kirsty. Hi, Zoe. Zoe. This is the poached salmon. It's a gorgeous cheese mousse. Yeah, they're incredible. So pretty. This is the, uh, the langoustine with the braised pig ears. This here? Uh, ear? Yeah. <laughs> Battered pig's ear. Oh, How is everything? It's really wonderful. I tried Good. the pig's ear. Did you? Yeah. And? Different. <laughs> All we do is we braise it for about three hours and then we cut them into little pieces and then, yeah, deep fry. Yeah, I was going to say, they look quite small for a pig's ear. <laughs> yeah. To us and to a successful task and many more to come. Revolution. Revolution. <laughs> Cheers. Chin chin. <laughs> We've made a loss of about £200. The other team has made a profit. Something went seriously wrong somewhere. And I don't think we made a loss anywhere where we are selling to the public. We actually... Well, hang on. Yeah. We took £250, we made 280 What did you guys take when you were off from us? We only had a couple of pieces left and we left with quite a lot of stocks. Yeah. So. Clearly, we didn't so. do a terrific job. I did become project manager on the first task. I did put my name forward immediately. I did take a risk, and I think Lord Sugar will admire this. I don't really think that we let too many customers slip away. We no. did. Did we? We let a lot of people go. Reese, I felt his attitude in the task and towards my management was not helpful to the task. It's, it's not our fault, I think. Well, of course it's our fault. It's not our fault. <laughs> you can't blame it on someone else. No, I blame it on the location. We're the team, we take the rap yeah. for it. Yes, would you send the five of them in, please? Lord Sugar, we'll see you now. Right, gentlemen, bit of a disaster, right? No excuse for losing the amount of money that you lost. What went wrong? I feel the location wasn't the best place so to be. So the location was yep. one of the things. Anything else? I think there was poor delegation on part of the project manager. Poor delegation? We wasted too much time as well. Wasted time. OK. So let's start with location, shall we? Who's responsible for that, do you think? I think for the location, Reese initially put the idea forward for that, for that market. I think Reese pushed it. A little bit too much. I don't feel I pushed it too much. I actually said out in the open, I don't have a great knowledge of the area, but on paper that looked like the place to go. You were the person who pushed that yeah, through. We all agreed. We all took the responsibility on to take White Cross. 
If you didn't feel happy with that, as project manager, you should have said, no, let's go to. And even I was earlier just on, to take to it over and said, Covent Garden. You're defending your location, even though it was yeah, the wrong one. It was the wrong one, no doubt, but there was an opportunity there to sell more cheese. Mm. I still don't believe that there are enough people there. Must be a reason why all the other traders are there. There was a lot of people there were businessmen on their breaks. They come, they get their food for lunch, and they go. A lot of people probably weren't even interested in cheese. Some were, I understand. Might have been interested in his packs over there. I understand that, yeah. Yeah, might have been interested when you take the additional items like crackers I and I said all we that should take a lot more. And make them up into something, make it worthy of a lunchtime snack or something like that. You know, you, as a man that does the markets, knows better than anyone else that there is a window of time. And from what I've heard, you were all running around like headless chickens. We were confused and didn't know what to do because we were chopping and changing our jobs and just seeing, you know, whatever needs to be done, we were doing that. So what are you saying then? Are you saying that the team leader, Jordan, wasn't delegating responsibility to you properly? Yeah, basically. If we'd have been given set jobs to get on with... But you were given a set job. The credit crunch lunch, he gave you your own remit. Well, get actually, on with it. I was doing the, the packed lunches, but then I, you know, there were customers waiting, so I thought it's more important to didn't get those customers. Didn't you sell them straight away as soon as you made them? Yeah, they were going, mm. like hotcakes. Well, why didn't you make any more then? I wanted to make more. Who well, stopped you? The customers being there, there weren't enough people in the oh, store. Oh, not the wind now then? Oh, oh and the, yeah, and the wind, the wind also. Yeah. 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 Wind is my least favourite weather type, and it was just blowing everything anywhere. It made it really difficult. I think the wind's a pathetic excuse, to be honest with you. You're a man that spends his life on farms, yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I'm not yeah. saying... And you're talking, talking to about you, wind and conditions. To you, it sounds like a really pathetic Come on. excuse, and pathetic. I'm used to the wind. No, no pathetic excuse, really. From where I was, you had some fantastic ideas, Tim, but you didn't have the energy or the desire to see them through. It breaks down that, actually, the whole of the day that you spent in the marketplace, you actually took about 30-odd quid. And the other 250 quid was when you dumped the cheese, you dumped the cheese, at a price which my people tell me afterwards it was worth 450 quid. The fellow you dumped it on, he thought it won the lottery and gone to heaven. Whose decision was it to sell for 250 quid? Well, me and Reese in the car on the way over um, discussed how much we thought it'd be worth. I don't yeah. feel that I put a figure out there. I didn't feel there was enough of a discussion in the car to make a decision. We only decided when we got there we were even going to attempt to sell it in bulk. No, 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 no. We decided well, before we even left the market that we were going to dump it and, you know, try and get rid dump of it. Dump it, dump it. I get the underlying feeling, Tim, that there was kind of like a sell at any cost, really. Oh, it was. Why? We should have sold most of that cheese at the marketplace to have all that cheese to get rid of. That wasn't an ideal situation. But you mm. never interjected at any point that I saw. In fact, I didn't see any of you saying to Jordan, I think we should try something else, we need a different strategy. When myself, Arjun and Jordan were selling out to the public, I, I think we've done a very, very good job to, 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 to generate more uh, revenue. The simple facts are, the £289, 250 was sold to the restaurant. So that left £39 for a whole day's work. Is that what you do on Sunday? Definitely not, sir. No, definitely not. Lord. No. So what do you mean you were doing a great job when you were out there selling to the individual public? We sold the majority of what we had to sell. And I think that... Um, how we sold... been giving it away for nothing. Most of the cheese was on at least 120% profit margin. Arjun, what did you sell the final usherette tray of cheese for? That was a pound. The whole <laughs> lot? Yep. They say that cheese gives you nightmares. It's certainly working here, isn't it? So, Adam, who should get fired? Um, I feel f for delegation reasons, I think it should be Jordan. And possibly for making the last deal, it could be Tim. What do you think, Jordan? Well, I, I think Reese and Tim were the people responsible, primarily. I, I certainly think the majority of errors Who besides Who are you bringing back own, into this boardroom? Reese and Tim. OK. Listen, uh, Adam, this was a selling task. Yep. You sell in the markets. I do. I feel there's so much more to, to see from me, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, you're off the hook. Yeah. yeah. And I won't let you down in the future. Mm. I won't. That's a promise to me to you. OK, you two, back off to the house. You three go and wait out there, and we'll call you back in. One of you will be fine.
This Tim worries me a bit. I think he could be a lazy boy. He's happy just to make a deal and get home. That's the sense I've got of him.